Today is June 20th, 2022, and my guest is Nassim Nicholas Taleb. This is Nassim's 10th appearance on Econ Talk. He was last here in July of 2020 talking about the pandemic. Nassim, welcome back to Econ Talk. Thank you for inviting me again, and, and, and thanks for uh, allowing me to uh, test my ideas on you <laughs> before uh, completing uh, my, my books. And also have to admit that, that a lot of my uh, economic education comes from econ talk, the reasoning, the economic education, the economic reasoning, because you read stuff in books, you learn it at school, it doesn't work. <laughs> in the podcast form, because you have conversation between two people, somehow it's, it, it, it helps ideas sink in and, and stay there. Well, I said it's a huge sacrifice to have you on again. Uh, like, like a few other guests, you're one of my most popular guests. Yes. You're also a guest that occasionally there might be two or three people who ask me, why do I have you on? But I, okay. I buck the it's trend. Fine, I, I, I'm a contrarian and you're back. Um, I have. I, I, guess, I guess if it's only two or three people, uh, I may be doing things wrong. You need, uh, no. you need to have more enemies. I mean, I'm one very needs polite. to have more enemies. Yeah. Okay. I'm very polite. It might be 30. It might be okay. 20 or 30. Uh, <laughs> um, our topic for today is uh, a big picture topic. We're going to talk about the nation, the state, and some of the principles of governance. We're going to draw on a few recent pieces of yours on these topics that we'll link to. I want to start with the difference between a state as a nation, which you talk about in the ethnic sense, a nation and the state as an administrative entity. What's the difference? Why is that an important well, I distinction? Mean, for, for, you know, the, the notion of nation state is extremely modern. And I think it's not till 1780 that that people started talking talking about it. And and of, of course you had uh, uh, what we call nations now as territories of kings. So and then the king would, would acquire the territory and would expand whatever uh, the, the kingdom would be. So so the and then of course people became became uh, addicted to the notion of nation state. And then we had. Uh, the German, Italian unification, and, and other things. But in the past, and, and of course, the French, what I call domestic colonization, when, when they, they just realized that they were a state, and about 50, 60 years into their idea that now we're a state, uh, they, they decided to destroy anything that was not uh, French in France, and the French as defined by the upper class language that was spoken in, in the area uh, near Paris. So, uh, and, and then Jules Ferry banned all uh, local languages. You know, you go to school, you get punished for speaking Patois, Provençal, uh, uh, the dialect of Strasbourg, the Germanic dialects, uh, Breton or other, uh, uh, you know, they, they call them dialects, of course, because a dialect is, is, is basically, a dialect is something that doesn't have a nation state. A language has a nation state. Anyway. So, so this concept, which is a fairly modern concept, a couple of hundred years old, yes. or maybe even less, uh, this was the nation as a homogeneous ethnicity speaking not a common necessarily language. homogeneous like for the french their idea of the, the nation was those who would want to acquire french uh because it it, it was the the formal language so so not necessarily ethnic and then again the notion of ethnicity is is, is very weird because you know you have recombination recreation of ethnicities every day just like you have languages are born every day, uh, they separate. So, so you have ethnicities uh, developing all the time. The, the and the Turks, for example, uh, when we talk about ethnicity, what, what what is an ethnicity? Is it a race? The, the Turks uh, created their nation state, and and that's when they decided uh, to lose whatever tolerance they had for uh, the other. And uh, you know, Turkey was Turkey today was when it was the Ottoman Empire had a huge number of ethnicities. Or people speak in different languages: Armenian, Greek, uh, Kurdish, uh, uh, and then in the south, uh, Turkish speaking with Alevis, uh, people, Christians who spoke Greek, uh, and then different varieties: Greek, Monte, Greek. They had all these this mosaic of people and, and people who spoke uh, the Levantine dialect in, in, in some parts of Turkey. You had all of these, and then they became a nation state. And sure enough, four, they d tried to destroy all these. Uh, Minorities. I mean, visibly, we know about the Armenian and Assyrian massacre, uh, 
Uh, and so, yeah, they also had people who spoke Aramaic there. And so they had the massacres and it became intolerant because a nation state by definition is something intolerant. And, um, and, and of course, uh, you know, there's, there's one one interesting thing about it is that it's not really ethnic because when you think about it, when you do the DNA of Turkey today, you realize that it's maybe about 7% Turkic at the most. The so, entire so, Western Turkey is Greek. They're Greeks who speak, who convert to Islam, and with Islam came the Turkish language. So what is the sense in which a nation in the ethnic sense is, is a meaningful example? One is very small. Okay, when it's very small, and uh, the, 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 to me, the, if you're going to have a nation state, it must be the smallest possible unit. Because if you make it too big, then you start having minority problems, you start having uh, uh, conflicts. Uh, and let me explain it, okay, uh, in this term. Uh, when when two people, uh, and why scale is important, when two people are roommates, they can have fights. They may not get along. But then you, 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 instead of giving them, say, a thousand square feet for two people together at school, or you break it to 500 square feet for each, and each one has an apartment, they'll get along a lot better. And there, there have been studies uh, showing that good fences make good neighbors. And and we saw that in Yugoslavia. I mean, we saw that in Switzerland historically. In lot of, you know these cantons, which effectively are sort of states, small states, under some kind of umbrella. But if you if you look at if you look at what happened in Yugoslavia, look, they're getting along now. How many states have Croatia, Montenegro, uh, uh, Slovenia, uh, the, the, the North Macedonia? All, all these states, okay, they get along because each one has a little home. So even if they're open to commerce with others. See, it's still better than what it was before. Now, there's two aspects of scale here. One is that in certain dimensions, and you can expand on this, obviously, in certain dimensions, small works well generally. There's some economies of scale also, but small works well. But it's not just that it's small. You're making the claim that when I clump my smallness with people like me, my ethnic group, my so-called nationality, we can solve our problems in certain dimensions more easily than if I'm trying to negotiate across roommates. Is what, that's the point you're making, right? But there's I'm, two I'm types saying, of sides I'm saying there. That, take, take, take a very simple example, Copts in Egypt, okay? The Copts are being persecuted in Egypt. But if they had their own state within Egypt, if they were not geographically uh, distributed, but they were concentrated in a small state, it would be a lot better for them. And and it's the same thing with uh, with a lot of a uh, lot of countries. So that idea of the state is modern. Okay, the state as a person, uh, as a I'm sorry, an entity. That kind of Hegelian, uh, you know, uh, idea of reification of of, of um, you know, uh, uh, states. It's almost like a person and, and a new person. Okay, composed of others uh, that fueled a lot of Germanic uh, ideas. Of course, we know uh, that we know um, that, that that idea is is very modern. In the past, you had ethnicities, you had different groups, but uh, the administration was a city, and the city is a place that obeys uh, laws. Okay, some laws, and it's pretty much it was an administrative entity. You had a city, and city state flourished. Whereas nation states historically, and I discussed that in anti-fragile, uh, turned out to be fragile. Empires fared well. What's an empire? The difference between an empire and a, a nation is that an empire has absolutely no interest in your life other than collecting taxes and making sure you don't wage wars. Uh, you know, uh, you don't allow their enemies to wage war. So basically, it's a tax, uh, it's, it's a mafia scheme. It's, a, it's a, some kind of piso, as the Italian would call it. So that's pretty much what an empire was. And, and the emperor, I mean, the empire, the empire is, uh, lasts long when, when they don't overcharge the people there. So they're happy. And, and I know the, the, from the history of the Phoenicians, they never really had a big nation. There were uh, state, small state, uh, small uh, cities, city states, and uh, and then they said, okay, so what? The Persians are going to come, ten percent, okay. 
You know, cheaper than have an army. And who's going to come after? Oh, you're going to have uh, you're going to have uh, Alexander's come. Ten percent hmm? cheaper than have an army. And uh, the Romans are going to come. Ten percent. Okay. When you oh, say ten percent, you mean or tribute to the home tribute team. to whatever to what, yeah. whatever you're going to you're going to pay them. Taxes. So it's cheaper taxes. Yeah, it is. And 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 the, the, after the the Bronze Age collapse. You know, the, where, where all these uh, big states, uh, Hattusa, vanished, the big important states, uh, you know, uh, Egypt you know, was, was brought to its knees, the, the, the city-states of the Eastern Mediterranean flourished. But, so, but in modern times, yes. city-states are rare. And if anything, the impulse is to, to expand. So the classic example would be uh, the Sudetenland, right? So there's a piece of Czechoslovakia that happens to have a lot of Germans. So Hitler says, ah, I think that should belong to Germany because those people want to be part of Germany. Now, of course, some of them did, some of them didn't. Their neighbors, like the cops you're talking about, they were not all in one little place. They were spread out among other uh, ethnicities and other, other peoples. And nation states tend to... In, in my historical observation, my observation of history, to expand to try to grab more of the local yes. ethnic group uh, rather than to be more pure okay. and homogeneous. So what's going on there? That's true. It's, it depends if you're rural or if you're uh, are you rural or are you uh, uh, you know urban. Uh, ba uh, not urban but based on uh, you know is, are you deriving your your uh, your livelihood from uh, land or from commerce? So the Phoenicians were not interested in the land, they were interested in commerce. Same with Venice. Take Singapore today. You see, they're not interested in conquering land, they're not interested in geopolitics, they're interested in making money. See? So they become that there's that tolerance of, of city states that you don't observe. Incidentally, one observation you are located in a nation state now, currently, as we're talking, okay, a few time zones I away. Yes. Yes, and and what's the name in the 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 language their language? What's the name of that state? Well, I'm in I'm in uh, I'm in Israel, which yeah, no, is what's the name? Uh, what's the name? The city is Jerusalem that I'm in. No, no, no. Uh, the the name of the state on your passport. What does it say? Israel. No, it says Medina. <laughs> Med, it says oh, Medina Medina not Israel. Israel. Okay. okay. So so from the, the country the word of come, Israel. No, no, the Medinat means actually in Arabic, the same word, Medinat means city. Mm. So it means Deen. Deen is, is law. It means I live under the laws of, of Israel. And that's a city state. City state is the body of laws, if you look at it. Hmm. I like that. Laws. I live under the laws of, of, of that place. And, but of course, so a state is a body of laws, basically, that you're accepting. And in a mo or not, but that's you're under their rubric. The, the modern nation state, which of course is there, there are many different ones of different sizes. They have varying abilities to enforce their laws up to their borders. Meaning, yes, <laughs> in the United States, if you live in South Dakota or California or Texas at the edges of the country. The, the federal law pretty much still applies. You can hide in a cabin somewhere off the grid, maybe for a while. But in general, you're going to be subject to the administrative entity known as the United States. Uh, but there are other nations where that's not so true, right? You live in the borders of that, that geographical country, but the administrative entity does not fully extend all the way to the border reliably. Is that that's correct, no? Uh, I, I can you give an, an example. Where, Somalia, where, China, China, on paper, even yeah, of China, course, of course, even of course, China, of course. right? Which is people think of yeah, this okay, authoritarian so means, state. I mean, that that I was actually what you're saying traditionally held, okay? Because uh, the today the, the modern state has tools that represent a lot more of the GDP than it did before. In France, up to I don't know how you count education, fifty to seventy percent of GDP comes from the state. Whereas a hundred years ago, it was uh, one almost an order of magnitude. Uh, <laughs> lower, so the uh, so the state was not very powerful in the past. And if you take the la the French language distribution in France, for example, it was along the tax routes. So that that uh, that because the king can tax these areas, so the, the the it was very limited the access of the state. They didn't have radars, 
They didn't have satellites. They didn't have uh, all these tools of enforcement. They couldn't spy on you. Uh, they didn't have the internet. So we have, the state is had had different uh, morphology. But let me let me make a comment here: why size is central to what we're discussing, because people keep using name state, nation, and stuff. The size is central. Uh, you you do a lot better, I think, meeting a person a thousand times than meeting a thousand persons once. So in other words, you're in a big city like New York City, you walk out, you're going to see uh, every day different people. We're just going to, okay, so whereas in a village, you're going to probably encounter the same number of people, assuming you encounter, you know, it would be the same people. So it's like knowing it's a friend, it's a person that you see a thousand times. You see, uh, one person a thousand times rather than a thousand strangers once, you see. So the 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 things don't scale properly. There are things that, that that work differently at a lower uh, scale. Than, and that's what I've discovered while, while working on volatility models to show that why an elephant, for example, is not a large mouse. An elephant is vastly more Explain. fragile. Okay. Uh, because of the way the risk scale, an elephant falling by one meter would break a leg and would never recover. A, a mouse visibly is vastly more robust. So, so we can see some some biomechanical things, and 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 it comes from the nonlinearity of shocks. And 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 to use an example, I I, I have an antifragile, the story of the rabbi, uh, who one day was asked by the king who, to find a solution to the following problem. He had to punish his son who committed a certain crime, and the punishment was to crush him with a large stone. So the rabbi said, yeah, of course there's a solution. He said, what? He said, you break the stone and pebbles. <laughs> so uh, that nonlinearity, falling 10 meters uh, once is, is, is vastly worse than falling 10 times one meter. So most of my work since uh, uh, like 2009 has been on this, finding you know, the, the effect of these nonlinearities in places. And 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 hence, uh, you know, a large state is actually more fragile. It requires uh, an extraordinary, uh, ex an increased expenditure in monitoring. So when we take Russia, for example, that has always been a large state, it has to curate an identity, centralized. It has always been centralized, always has a curated identity. And throughout the three regimes, had the same system. You see. The, that big uh, uh, sprawling country, and, and and of course it has to be aggressive because that's the mode on which Russia was built. The three regimes, you meaning the czarist regime, the communist regime, and whatever you want to call the and current now, regime. And now what we have now, yes, they had the Cheka KGB FSV. Uh, they had uh, they had uh, almost the same apparatchiks kept moving. What happened is you kill, hang, uh, or or fire the top uh, people in administration. But as we know from Trump's experience, he went to Washington. You know, he, you know, he had to face a, an infrastructure that was entirely hostile because they were all Democrats and, and didn't like him. And you can't, you can, you, you, you can do so little. You see, in an administration, when you change the regime, the same thing happened in Iran. The same, they kept the same, uh, the same apparatus that the Shah had. Uh, you know, to monitor dissidents, <laughs> they used it, and and of course, the the the, the in, in local uh, uh, offices have got to be the, the the practically the same people. It takes a long time to change the administration, but, but and when it's large, it is it is when it's large, it is a, a severe problem. So I don't. Let, let's go a little deeper into this. So yes. Let me let me start. Let me start by I, I love. It's a very provocative idea. That if I see a thousand people once, it's very different than seeing one person a thousand times. It, it's a very interesting way to think about um, quality versus quantity in terms of how you interact with your children. Um, the, 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 it's a very deep idea. It, I don't see how it works in this case, though. So let, that's what, let's start going, by going deeper into that. And for, for example… New York City would seem to me to make make a pretty good city state, but are you saying it's already it too is, big? It, it is be, practically it is operating be, like city state, but it has yeah, to be no, Brooklyn, that, Manhattan, Queens, and even then, I'm still not going to see somebody often. I mean, okay. It's not a village. No, we have we have to understand that the 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 U.S. is not a uh, a uh, republic. The U.S. is a federation. 
where, where you have a lot of uh, power to the local uh, municipalities yes. and local cities. And New York City is effectively a state. You can view it as a state and the way it does business. Uh, the area, the New York area, is pretty effectively a state. It's, yeah. they, they, say, they say that the optimal uh, size of these units is about 8 million. See, so so the notion of city state is 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 uh, I mean let's not go by labels let's go by the function if you look at functional state like the area around London the area around Amsterdam um, and, and then the word tend to cluster now in these to, you know to these kind of uh, zones uh, but the nefarious aspect of the state that I was discussing is is when when you have a top down state and it needs to curate its identity all the time becomes like Russia very aggressive. It cannot tolerate uh, the you know neighbors uh, who you know don't abide by their uh, by their rule. It's imperial in, in in nature. And then of course you have the story of Ukraine. Now to go back to uh, uh, the notion of empire versus nation. Okay, uh, we are going to uh, you know the beauty of an empire and the Ottoman Empire lasted long. The Roman Empire lasted very long. The, uh, the Habsburg Empire, the Austro-Hungarian, lasted long. It was multi; they were always multi-ethnic and, and mostly, you know, distributed uh, states. And and they were there for uh, their tax, you know, and and of course to dump, to make sure that military is the area is theirs, uh, but not the police. I mean, you can you know have a local police. Um, what is important in, in, in that thing that uh, we recreated that model using NATO. You see, when when where where you can have now instead of having an empire protecting you, you can have a uh, some kind of self-protection mechanism via uh, a, a some kind of league. Okay. Well, it's a way of yes. overcoming the economies of scale problem. If you're small, you're you vulnerable. stay small exactly. So what happens is that when you have economies of scale, the the the, the that notion for when when I keep arguing that uh, you can't, it's not. You know, the 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 it depends on the domain. It is domain dependent. You need to be centralized for military. Although, in some cases, it helps to have the centralized military, as Al Qaeda and and US right replicate their model with the building of its unit. But and and size, what is large? Okay, for example, a, a restaurant with a hundred table is large. But a, a company that makes manufactures, I don't know, chemicals, uh, you know, needs to be a uh, hundred times the size to be large, or 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 thousand times the size. So it depends on the domain, and and it looks like the thing that requires centralization is a military. And and of course, and I will argue also pandemics, and I've argued uh, that that people like von Mises and Hayek said the state is needed for centralized activities such as epidemics and wars, that's Hayek, and von Mises accepted the state. They didn't hate the state, they just said, you know, their idea of the state uh, having its function, and that function is things that cannot be done by, by other uh, units, and that's a notion of subsidiarity under which the European Union was built. Unfortunately, execution uh, is not in, in line with the, uh, with the claims, the initial claims. So, but, so, but, but the, so we got yes. we got to back up. We got to back up. Yes. The whole the whole point that that I understand you to be making, both in the pieces that you've written recently and going back to your books, Get in the Game and Anti Fragile, the value of the small scale is to maintain skin in the game. It's to maintain. It's also you have skin in the game exactly because a local ruler, okay, a, a, a bureaucrat in Brussels is not gonna be punished if the bridge uh, doesn't work well. But the local uh, mayor, particularly if if it's elected among the citizens, will you know have you know to encounter uh, you know at the cafe on Sunday afternoon with kind of with shame would feel shame if uh, she or he uh, you know uh, fail in the project so there is there is some kind of some kind of game and particularly when you elect people embedded from the community but that's a very lovely idea and, and but it it doesn't I don't know how you get there from here. So let, let me I mean, take the, 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 you, you have to look at where it worked and and how it worked. It worked very well in Sweden and and in 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 the Scandinavian countries that they're already small, and they got smaller. You know, Swedish and Norway speak languages that are close together. Okay, 
and 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 uh, and and but when you talk about other countries like uh, like in, in, in the Middle East countries that, that speak languages they call it Arabic but they're like they're, they're absolutely not not connected okay I mean the dialects are not mutually understandable but so so they they broke up things as fast as they could and within the the way they they manage their uh, provinces okay it is bottom up Switzerland is the country that is built to be bottom up and to stay bottom up. Where you pay t- most of your taxes to the municipality and the residual the tax to the to the to the canton and and to the local uh, unit and and the residual to the state, whereas um, whereas uh, things that were ca- came you know from the old world were top down. And so, uh, by the way, Germany has always been bottom up. You know there were three hundred states before the say the French Revolution, thirty nine states when it came to unification. Uh, and and of course now they they have, they have their bunds, so now it's, it, it's uh, because after the people didn't realize that after the war, uh, the French wanted to punish them. They said, "Oh, unification, then you get Bismarck, uh, and then you get Hitler." Um, you know what? Let's make sure that they're a federation, so they unify. And that's what made them strong <laughs> economically. So they wanted to punish Germany by, by making it the federation distributing, that's in the French mind. The power, yeah. Exactly, distributing the power make make allows for things to work better. Why? Well, as you mentioned, skin in the game. There are also uh, a lot of mechanical things, and 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 uh, you also have to understand that the the the, the bureaucrat thinks in terms of geopolitics and abstract matters, whereas a local person thinks in terms of water, bridges, uh, uh, cleanliness of the uh, you know, schools, well, stuff yeah. like that. Yes. Yeah. So as an economist, the way I think about it, which yes. is similar, but not exactly the same as the way you think about it, I think about it is that, you know, I want to be in, in a club. Ideally, I want to be in a club with people who, who share my preferences. We can then do things together effectively, but that's going to be a very small club. So it has to be bigger than that usually. And I'm going to have, I'm going to sacrifice some autonomy, some freedom of choice. And in particular, there are going to be situations where it's inherently uh, going to be a conflict that we don't agree, say on the size of the military, size of the police force. And we, we accept that restraint on our ideal because we understand that the gains from, uh, banding together are sufficiently large. When you go past that point, and I'll use the United States as an example, all of a sudden there's a a potential for cross-subsidization and the political process can start to devote itself to rent-seeking, to exploiting certain groups at the expense of others. And you can't, you're stuck. You can leave, to leave the country is relatively costly. And the, 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 the politicians are then able to pass certain regulations and, and laws that are not, quote, for the good of the people, but are rather good for certain people, not for others. So what you're suggesting, and I think it's, um, maybe you will maybe don't agree, but what I think you're suggesting is something um, that was unimaginable 25 years ago, but I think is increasingly likely, which is that the United States will divide into more than one country. Uh, California well, could be, could be know, its own country. It is country. designed for that. The United States is designed to be divided into one country. All you have to do is weaken the federal government's role in some affairs, and 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 increase the role of the state. The problem is uh, the and every time I talk to people about it, the the Republicans love the idea of a strong state. Okay, weak. Uh, Weak central government. On the other hand, they want a <laughs> they want a strong state over the municipalities, mm-hmm. as we saw with COVID. So, so the, we already have the structure in the United States for what you're discussing. You have states, okay? Literally, you, and then the right. idea, yeah, the this, idea, exactly. So you have states. I think it's called the United States. I exactly. Have to remember that that that, that <laughs> exactly. name actually isn't so, just like Fred. It's an it's actual not, description. Exactly. So, so people may be fighting in Washington over something, and and in the state over something else. What matters for you is what happens in your municipality and in your state, not in, uh, far away. And states here are uneven. You know, have size uh, a size problem. Some states are very small. Some states are very large, like California. So Texas. Uh, so effectively, all you have to do is redistribute decision making from the central government to the states. But that's not very popular. 
Uh, although, although, again, I think the South could secede again, ironically. Uh, the coasts uh, could secede from from the Federation, right? You could have California, Oregon, Washington State called a new new country. You could have the East Coast be another country. The Midwest would be a country and the South would be a country. Now, what would be wrong with that? There would be two things potentially wrong. One is they'd still need some perhaps unified defense policy, although it's not obviously so necessary because they have the oceans. But the other idea that, that's fascinating, which we haven't talked about, is that people like the idea of belonging to the United States of America. They used to. I don't think they like it so much. I, I don't think there's a national narrative that's shared by those four yeah, different okay, countries. I mean, the, the notion of national narrative, again, I mean, in, in, in my work now, the notion the narr narrative uh, should not be uh, the driver because national narratives change all the time. This is why when you're small, you it's easier, again, it's a matter of scaling. They can change narratives uh, much faster. And I saw the piece I wanted to discuss today is the one I wrote on Ukraine versus Russia, not because we care about Ukraine. We care about Ukraine, of course, we care about Russia, but because it's, it represents the model and, and it's, uh, a thing, it's a talk I gave in Ukraine during the summer. I was a guest of the government and, and I saw what was happening uh, and on where I explained first that you can speak Russian. It's not a problem. You don't have to create... Uh, you know, a new category, linguistic category, you can speak Russian and not be part of Russia. The Russians couldn't get it, uh, but the Swiss get it. You can speak French, and be culturally linked to France, but administratively linked to Switzerland, where it works better. So first I started explaining that you had to break up that notion of, of, of uh, state equal uh, nation equal people that equality, and, and then effectively you start having pathologies with the nation state where where the whole nation as an entity, okay, and, and, uh, it, on, on balance acts against the interests of the individuals. See, where you have you have these uh, things that start emerging from, from bad scaling. So uh, in that piece, I, I, I said what we have here, it's a war. And then I rewrote it, you know, after the, the war started, I said, we have a war not between two countries, not between East and West, between a model, the new model, okay, which is NATO-based, where basically all we have is you could have any kind of NATO, so long as our defense is ensured as it was during the Ottoman Empire, the Roman Empire, during under Alexander, under some kind of new imperial power, which is NATO, Shared was shared decision making, a confederation of military power. Essentially. Exactly for, for and then you do whatever you want outside of that. You see, and and what I, what we call the West is not the West versus Russia. It is the West includes Taiwan. You see, so look at and 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 when you when you look at that model, all right, it is a of course it's a classic liberal model. And when you when you let nations be, start working on nations, they focus on prestige. Like Napoleon was interested in prestige of France. The English couldn't understand him, and he didn't understand the English. The English were interested in commerce, and couldn't understand why this person hurting his economic interest in the name of prestige simply to prevent ships you know, from carrying merchandise across his territory. So he he couldn't understand the English. They couldn't understand. They were already one century apart, you see? We're living in Adam Smith's world where the pencil is made by people who have never met one another and don't even know, <laughs> okay, that their contribution is going towards a pencil, uh, except for one. Uh, we're living in that world thanks to some globalization. And of course, it can have its... Uh, its limits. So, so what people are no, nobody really wants to autarky. So, what we're disagreeing about is the degree of the limits of that globalization. When how how you know, but nobody nobody wants to go back to uh, to autarky. So, when people say I'm against globalization, they usually mean I would like it reduced in some places to exactly to to be managed better. But globalization visibly is the 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 name of the game today. And and that that idea of people uh, obsessed with national identity and prestige and stuff like that is very archaic, but it was already archaic uh, two hundred and twenty five years ago. But don't you think it appeals to people? I mean, isn't isn't part of what we talked about 
uh, Brexit with Megan McArdle based on Roger Scruton's book, Where We Are. Don't people have a sense of self, part of their identity that comes from where they live and it the is, pride it is, they have in their yeah, country? It changes, and it's, it changes all the time. That's the problem. The, why is that the, important? Pro- Explain. Uh, okay. The, 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 what you, this, this is why I like the minimum deliverable. <laughs> The, the 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 minimum deliverable unit uh, in size because when 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 things are small they can change more easily when things are big it's again a matter of scaling you see running Russia versus say uh, is much uh, much more much much more uh, difficult uh, much more than ten times more <laughs> difficult than running a country a tenth of the size. Gets disproportionate. You have to curate an identity. You have to keep curating an identity. Uh, the state has to keep managing things: uh, the flag, the anthems, the history, uh, the language, and all these matters. Uh, and, and it gets harder as this, disproportionately as the state gets bigger. It's just like the stone harms you more and more as it gets bigger, disproportionately. So you double the stone, you have four times the harm. Yes. In the United States. You're suggesting that at its at its current size, given its diversity, it, it cannot curate an anthem, a narrative, a language. It can, it can, because the United States the United States is probably an exception to that rule because of the way it's built. Okay. In the United States, you realize the federal government doesn't enter your lives that much. You know, the municipality, the county, the state, the smaller units enter disproportionately. And a country like Russia under Putin, as as it was under, you know, the, 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 the czars, Putin now names the governors of provinces. And then you end up having a, a large state with at least 100 ethnicities, Russia, uh, that needs to be curated all the time. Because so otherwise it break apart. So I want to get this. You, you gave me half the story of this, this recent essay. Ukraine is Western, you're arguing. It is de facto kind of under the umbrella of a military confederation known as NATO. France is part of that. Germany is part of it. Italy yeah, I mean, is part Ukraine of it. is not there yet. That's what it wants to be. I it understand. Wants it's to it's be, longing. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's aspiring to be part of this, uh, what you call more bottom-up, quote, Western approach. And as you point exactly. out, Western is a, is a misnomer in the sense that Taiwan is in the West. It wants yes. to be a independent um, entity. What's the other side? What, what's, what's against the West? The, other, the side other side is a czarist model, okay, of centralized, over-centralized administration curating an identity and a large territory and needing to acquire more territory because you have to think of the genesis of that. Okay, think when we had uh, Venice. Venice was a flourishing republic for 1,100 years, more, 1,100 some years. Uh, Venice. It did not try to acquire territory. It was that's not the business they were in. You see, it not, not, I mean, it tried to acquire places like Famagusta and other other spots for commerce, but not like for the sake of territory. It, uh, that was not their business, you see. Russia's business is to acquire territory. Plus, we have to think of Russia. Why? But why? Why can't it just well, be that's content how it having its big, the, you know, big that's self? how it started. <laughs> when you talk about ethnic state and eth- you have said ethnicity as of when, you see, when when people go back in history and say, "Oh, this is a territory," as okay, but the, every piece of the world that had, had, had belonged to some other group, so claiming uh, historic answers. But Russia is very weird because it's the one, it, it has uh, it's, it's two exceptions. One is the, 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 a, a place that was formed by migrations coming from west to east, you know, from the, 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 the Volga, uh, the freshwater uh, Vikings coming down and mixing with these populations west to east and the other one is it creates its identities big identity rather late in history and and, then you know quite late in history i mean you have to remember that uh that uh in in the 13th century kiev was a khanat of kiev you know under the the grandson of uh of uh genghis khan so that eurasian steppes is is the one the mediterranean was settled early but the eurasian steppes is the one that was settled the latest 
So creating identities and things that, that, that formed late requires a lot of work. <laughs> A lot of, a lot of, a lot of work, and it was helped by orthodoxy, not because of the religion, but because they had that Slavic language or Church Slavonic as a beacon, as a, 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 a pure language to work with. But, but that that curation challenge, which I understand, it's you know, it's like um, I understand the challenge of it, but it seems to me the point you're really making is that. A state of that size, with that loss of skin in the game, that loss of accountability for the people, the people you're, if you're living in, in, um, I'm going to say Leningrad, uh, if you're living in, what is it called now? Is it St. Petersburg? I, I, I'm St. Not Petersburg, yes. Okay, Petersburg. thank goodness. Didn't humiliate myself completely. You know, I had COVID recently, uh, Nassim, and they say COVID is tough on your memory. But I, I don't know. It, it, it increased mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't have very good memory. I forgot stuff a month ago before I had COVID too. And I get tired in the afternoon before I had COVID. And I still get tired in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, I'm so tired with COVID. Um, but anyway, um, if you're if you're living in St. Petersburg, it's true. You care about the how the whether the water's clean, <laughs> whether the, the the bridge has potholes and is safe. You care about the quality of your school if you're going to a public school and so on. And it's true that if if Putin has has basically named the mayor of St. Petersburg or named the head of the province or whatever the, the you know the governor, it's not not going to work very well. But isn't that the essential point? The, the lack of skin in the game of a large centralized top-down place is the problem, not not this curation identity no, thing no, you're talking is, about. No, there is there are a lot of things together, but uh, skin in the game that's not one of them. It's multifactorial, but I think that uh, it's also easier to manage when it's small. Other than skin in the game, it is uh, communication-wise because uh, things grow. You know, the connections grow at two, you know, uh, non-linearly when you have a large country. So having this communication network and all of that requires more and more effort to just keep the thing uh, centralized. So centralization has not worked in practice aside from skin in the game. And you're saying the U.S. is partly an exception because it's a more federated system. It's a federal it, it system. It started as a federation, the United yeah. States. It is, uh, and, and, and the individual has a, a big role in the United States. You don't have a national narrative. You, know, you don't have a national language. You can Used speak to. Spanish. Yeah. You can speak Spanish. Uh, the, the common narrative is a law. I mean, that's uh, people talk about the Constitution as if it were religiously. The, 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 you know, uh, the, 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 there's a the, the, the mechanism. You know, of the United States actually is being used as a model in Europe. You know, to well, try so I, to have the same, the same, the same, the same thing to hold together these bunch of countries now. That new legal system called EU, uh, and a lot of people are using the, the, the United States. We have to also realize it's a, the oldest. It's one of the oldest democracies functioning. In, in at the Congress of Vienna, uh, there were only two democracies, and people didn't understand where's the king. I mean, who does it belong to? Because before. When you had kings, it belonged to a king. So it's a, it's a country built differently, and it works. But I like your metaphor. That the thing I've enjoyed so, so far, the, the most of what we've talked about, is it's better to be a mouse than an elephant uh, in in many time, many situations because you're more uh, you're anti fragile. Uh, but of course, there are times you'd rather be an elephant um, when there's a lot of cats around. You know, of course, of the, course. The elephant is has got those advantages, and that's the that's the, yeah. I think but, a very... but look at survival. It's survival. Let's look at numbers. You don't have a lot of elephants left. It's true. The mammoths went went even before we started messing with the environment. The mammoths uh, disappeared. The large animals disappeared quickly. They go extinct very quickly. It tells you something about uh, if you want to survive, be a, if you're. You want your genes to survive, as a or species. species to survive. Yes, but that's uh, one of your big. That's your other big point in some of this writing, which I also love. It's one of the deepest things I've learned from you. That uh, as a species, as a group, uh, we really want to avoid ruin. And ruin for one person is a tragedy, of course. A, death, a single death is a tragedy, but a uh, the death of a people, the death of a species, the death of a of a humanity on the surface of the earth, that's apocalyptic. That's a cataclysm. That's a catastrophe. It's not a tragedy. And that we should be very aware of things that 
threaten ruin. We should do that as individuals too. I think it's a powerful personal lesson. But but your point is that mice may be vulnerable to a stampeding elephant, but mice as a popul a mouse might be vulnerable. But mice, eh, they're hanging in there. They're doing pretty well. There's exactly. Of- we, have, we have more mice in New York than humans, <laughs> they claim, all right? <laughs> Can I say the same about elephants in Africa? Even yeah. if you if you scale by you know by the size, uh, I have a couple of more things uh, you know I'd like to discuss with uh, modern world. So and in fact, I just thought of contradicting your idea. So oh, maybe the United States should break up. The rest of the world is trying to resemble the United States. It is trying to the what, rest resemble of, it to resemble the United States in structure. Europe, for example. So it's not, I mean, we're far away from that. Okay. So uh, it works. And it doesn't work in in many other places that are large because this structure is effectively, you you don't need to belong to another country because you don't feel the need. But you'd feel the need to belong to another country if you're in, in, um, if you're in uh, Tatarstan, for example, part of the Russian Federation, you want to be out if you're Tatar. Uh, you want to be out of Russia if you're English. You want to be out of Russia if you're Chechen. They tried, okay, by, by the way, uh, with, you know, before the Ukraine was even more disastrous consequences, more, more, more lives lost, uh, you know, per, uh, you know, per, per square mile. Uh, so, so one thing I'd, I'd like to add is the perception of the system. And that's an idea uh, I'm borrowing from Tocqueville and extending to the modern world. We live in a free world, okay? But sort of like, uh, yeah, as you say, not so free because that's a reason. You feel that it's not so free because it's free, you see? And it's improving. So Tocqueville realized that the degree of dissatisfaction in a country is proportionate to how good things are. <laughs> You see, so if you're, uh, and, and, and effectively, if you know, before uh, we had the internet, people weren't obsessed with freedom of, you know, about this people spying on you, but the state had J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> you see, now, now you see, so, so, so the more people talk about uh, uh, loss of liberty and stuff, the more liberty there is in the system. See, at no point in history have we had, uh, the, you know, more ri- given more rights to people who were, are underprivileged. But at no point in history have people complained more. So that comes with a system. Like you see, uh, another phenomenon where, where transparency is is uh, uh, a, a can be a problem because you you tend to see the bad things more easily in the Western world. Whereas in places like Russia and opaque systems, and you don't see them. See, you see the general. You don't see what's going on, and people don't complain about it. So, so what happened is states like Russia and China have tried to exploit that attribute of the Western system by creating a, by a distrust of the government on the part of citizens. You see, by you know, finding examples, a cherry picking example. It's a mal- you know, of course, you have malfunction everywhere. It's not perfectly free, but it's free, generally free. You see, well, so I, I, so, I, I do think I yes. think vigil. I think um, vigilance is um, is the um, constant vigilance is the price of um, of liberty and fighting tyranny is 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 always important and i just blew that quote because i've had COVID and i can't remember it correctly but maybe i'll remember by the end of our, our conversation but i i, I want to come back to your point in the united states in a different way i think it would it would help i think maybe mm-hmm. listeners see this helps me see it when i think about if the united states had a federal police system and we have the fbi which is a federal bureau of investigation but I suppose all police were employees of the united states that's a remarkably enormously different system than San Francisco having police or um, New York City having police. So all of the the terrible things that have happened with police in the last 10 years or so, and of course there made that before we weren't as aware of, had created enormous backlash. But it's localized and the people who are accountable – uh, have had trouble. If it was at the federal level, it would be hard to hold them accountable. Yes, exactly. Yes, it it's would, profoundly it would be. important that in exactly. a country exactly. the scope of the United States, the fact that police is decentralized, even though it lead, there are, it's imperfect, doesn't work great, it's not not perfect. 
it yeah, does same, have some yeah. accountability, which we yeah, have things, none of. <laughs> they're exactly. firing the chief of police of the United States because somebody in San Francisco was treated badly or somebody in New York City would be unimaginable. And it would just so, persist. Uh, yeah, so there are two things. Things that are imperfect, okay, but functioning well. Self-correcting mechanism. I call the West a self-correcting mechanism, okay, with complaints caused self-correction. So long as complaint leads to something. We had Snowden arguing about ticks, and I think I don't think that he did that in earnest. He wanted to hurt the country, whatever. But it led to some correction, okay? Whatever leads to correction, there's a good system. Now, uh, the, 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 this is very similar to food by randomness. The problem Explain. of food by randomness, okay, because, uh, you know, as you said earlier, the death of uh, a person is statistics, the death of, a, sorry, the death of <laughs> a, a child is a tragedy, the death of a million is a statistic, misattributed to Stalin. I didn't say that, that's what Stalin said. I said Stalin the death said, of millions is a catastrophe. It's a catastrophe, okay. <laughs> so, all right, so uh, the, the way we perceive things is, uh, again, a scale. And, and I know that from trading. If you show someone uh, his P&L live, he or she would go nuts. They, they would, they would, they would, they would magnify. As if you look at the screen, what do you mean? PNL being profit and loss. Yeah, profit and loss. If you, if you're a trader and you see PNL throughout the day, you go nuts. You see, you have all these emotional swings. Whereas if you see, uh, see it every day, you, you have uh, the, you know, it's better. Okay, and and I gave the example and fooled by randomness. By saying if something has uh, a uh, one unit of uh, standard deviation for one unit of returns, okay, you have say fifty one percent chance of being profitable any given day. You see, but you have a very high ninety some percent chance of being profitable over a say a year. So uh, the the uh, over longer than a year, like a Something like that. Okay, so the the eighty five percent probably been profitable over a year, but 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 very small and and intra intra day is nothing fifty point oh one percent. So it's the same thing with when you have details. So what this information does is provide people with a lot of details, rather than essential to drown you in details, hmm. so you don't see the thing in, at scale. We don't see what we so have. You're giving, scale. A, you're giving a theory of propaganda. If I'm, if propaganda, I'm, yes. Right, propaganda. I'm surfing on the web, and if my Facebook feed or my Twitter feed is full of these little nagging thorns of dissatisfaction, yes. I might start to think I have a bad life when, in fact, I have a great life. It's just it's not perfect. Exactly. You, you, you want to prevent yourself. And, and the therapy I, uh, you use as a trader is you look at your life to date PL. You see, so when you focus on your life to date PL, it puts things in perspective. You say, what? This is tiny. Or your year to date sometimes when you have a good year. Sure. But the best to focus on your life to date. You know, this is tiny and it allows you to continue. But a lot of people don't do that. They, they're drowning in news, they're drowning. In, and we're not good at scaling the news. So you have a piece of information, you know how to, to put it. It's well known statistical uh, problem. You have decision scientists and psychologists, you know, who. who created a whole field with it, the Kahneman Tversky approach, all that and how representative that piece of information, how you overestimate uh, its, its value. So this information will play on that, whether it's vaccines uh, or other things. So just to tell you that, hey, we live in a, uh, in a tyranny. Why? Because so and so happened, okay? Because you have truckers and, and so you think that the, and people manage to make you believe that truckers trying to block roads in Canada are equivalent to uh, uh, fighters in Ukraine. Yeah. So, so I mean, think like that. The, 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 the mechanism is very linked to food by randomness. Now, it's certainly true that we have trouble putting things in perspective and, and understanding the law of large numbers in every direction, right? That, yeah. that things, it's, it's like when the student complains about the exam being misgraded. And you want to say, uh, were you going to, are you going to come in when I gave you too many points? You know, when you have lots of exams, there's not, it's not a major injustice if your homework is off by a couple points and it's exactly, only 10% exactly. of the yeah. grade. It's a question of scaling. It's the same thing yeah. of scaling. How your mind scales, how things scale. 
You see, there's a lot of large numbers, it's a question of scaling, how randomness washes out under a large scale. And it's the same problem with, uh, with, with a lot of other things related to, to uh, political life. So this is really interesting, Nassim, but here's, here's my let's, – let's close with this question, and I'll give you a chance to make fun of libertarians, so, <laughs> okay. which I know you do occasionally, even though there's something I mean, libertarian. Because I, I, am, I am a deontic libertarian at a, you know Italian school and uh, where I think that uh, nobody should coerce me into something, but at the same time, like von Mises, I believe this has limitations. Like, so you're not yeah, an anarchist. So, we know that. Neither am I. I'm not an anarchist. I don't want to. I saw anarchy in Lebanon. We see it in Somalia. We, saw, we see it in Libya. We know what happens when you have no state. Okay. You just want to. You want to correct. You want to reform the establishment. So this these observations that you've made today and you've started to write about, um, I would. I think you would describe them generally as what is the appropriate scale of the state? What is the appropriate scope of the state? And that many of the states today around the world are, quote, too big. So that's an interesting observation. Is it a political message? Is it a, a rallying cry? Is it just a, a description, an observation of how the world works? Like, like I, yeah, I mean, Swiss, this is, like Switzerland. Okay. Do you want it, us it, to all turn into Switzerland? Do you think we should all not move to Switzerland, but do you think all countries should head towards Switzerland in some or dimension? Or United States or Germany. Uh, I mean, people when, people don't realize when I tell them, listen, what's the most successful place in the Near East or place we'd like to go to, they tell you, in the Middle East, not Near East. They say uh, Dubai. <laughs> Dubai is a city state. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other one, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is a city state as part of a confederation of city states. They share an army, okay, and and they share a an honorific uh, ruler and they share ambassadors. Okay, so so when you tell them, hey, what's the most successful modern country? Last fifty years, Singapore. Ah, what is it? a city state? See, so 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 what what and 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 it's a model for China. I mean, if if the Chinese want to survive. Okay, they should read more about the Bronze Age collapse. Okay, for, uh, about the Bronze, Bronze, Bronze Age collapse, uh -huh. and try to build themselves as a confederation of Hong Kong's and Singapore's. So, so what is stopping that? What is the? Is it? Is it simply the desire to culture, blindness, to culture, and not to accrete for power to accrete around uh, centers that naturally want to expand? I, I think that it, it, it all starts with we have bad uh, education in, 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 in many things. I mean, if you like, look at French education, how Napoleon was great because he made France great. Are you interested in French or Frenchmen? <laughs> okay. There's a difference. Uh, the goal is actually we're not interested in Frenchmen. It's interested in the glory of France and despise Frenchmen. So, so just to tell you how, how bad things can be, the education. They think that it's an entity, a religious entity you have to verify. And all that came after the French Revolution. I mean, all this disease of nation state, you know, came after the French Revolution. And it has some things that are horrible about it. To give you an idea, what happens, the death you have in another country, don't count on your balance sheet. Yeah. You see? So, whereas, whereas uh, the, 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 the Christian uh, religion makes you treat foreigners as equal. So, you realize, so we had a, a, a step in the moral field, a step backwards of the nation state. And think about it, they start wars. And, and, and I'm going to give you something quite convincing. We looked, uh, Chirillo and I, we study wars. We studied, the, you know, to do the, the dynamics and the properties of wars. How many people died in Italy before unification? You had hundreds of wars, like at least, okay, that we know of, okay? Some killed three people. <laughs> All right, sometimes the same mercenary, and then they settle. Okay, small towns, small wars between papal states and this and this. And some killed, of course, 15,000. But over 500 years, okay, the number is somewhere between, we think, 15,000 under 80,000 people died in wars. The first war cost Italy 680,000 soldiers. First World War. First World War, 680,000 people, okay? So you realize what nation states, they like war. But isn't part of that, aren't you confounding the advances in technology that made the First World War much more lethal? It wasn't merely that it was the wage between nation states, right? Maybe, or, but or, have you seen states waging wars? 
we had the, the defensive situation wars with the uh, the Greek Confederation against the state, <laughs> you know, the the, the the Persian state. But the, uh, the when you think about uh, what 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 I mean, city state have waged wars, but nothing uh, central. That's not part of the record. That's not the business they're in. Well, the See? other point that to make your point, when they wage a war, it's it, it its impact is limited. It's your point about you know. A couple of pe people drink and drive. Well, some of them are going to die. They're going to be taken out yeah. of the gene pool, and they're not going to kill other people down the road, literally. And city states that get rambunctious, well, they may cause some trouble in the neighborhood, but they're not going to. Exactly, it doesn't generalize quickly. It doesn't generalize quickly. Uh, I mean, uh, so I'm not wrong to say that never. They're never bellicose. We have had, uh, uh, you know, in Italy, there, it's always over something small, and it's never systemic. Like Hitler wanted. You know something systemic. One of you know the the the, the German uh, race to dominate this part of territory, this part of territory, or, or 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 what we have with the Russians. So I really like this vision, but you know it reminds me a little bit of my favorite poem by Hilary Belloc. Although I have a couple, um, it's called Passivism. It goes like this. It's very short. <clears throat> Pale Ebenezer thought it wrong to fight, but Roaring Bill, who killed him, thought it right. So if you're, it's nice, end of poem. So it's nice to have a city state that minds its own business, involves, engages in commerce, let people flourish, choose their own paths in life and so on. But in a, but in a world of nations, a city state's very vulnerable and there's a natural tendency towards forming a nation. So any imaginable path toward a reduction again in yes, the centralization? Exactly. Yeah, I told you NATO, NATO is there. That's the purpose of NATO. That's why I was excited about NATO, you see? That's how it started. That's how my whole, this whole essay on, on Ukraine started in Ukraine, rather than Ukraine, before the war, because it was like Anibal at Portas, you know, Hannibal at the, at the gates. You know, they, were, they, they all saw this monster, okay, silent monster, you know. A giant trying, bear, uh, 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 not an elephant, them. but a bear. <laughs> Uh, exactly. So it was a bear. <laughs> so uh, they, they they saw you know at the border uh, trying to get in, and, and 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 sure enough, trying to explain the notion of a, of a system where these things don't happen. Small states. I mean, it was said nationalism works at small scale because you know it's you know you may be you may not like your neighbors, but you end up dealing with them. But look what's happening in Yugoslavia. Has people forget to look at Yugoslavia as the best experience we had in years. And, and, and there's actually an additional state to the six. Uh, Kosovo is a state now, part of the former Yugoslavia. When you think about it, uh, this, this, this works. I, I guess you would also make the observation that, that NATO's military power uh, under the umbrella of a set of nation states, uh, all smaller than the whole, has yet to run amok. Is that an accurate statement? There's never been an a aggressive no, war of aggression by that is, kind of confederation. It's a defensive confederation. Is that am I romancing it a little no, bit? No, 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 you're not romancing it. The only problem was NATO. I mean I'm I'm gonna play the devil's advocate. The NATO, a lot of people say NATO is an extension of the United States. Using their colonies, you know, militarily speaking, to do work for them. Okay, and they say the European I, I, I Union is an extension of Germany, using their colonies. To exactly, extend. exactly. You hear exactly. The same a lot thing. of, lot of. We're going to hear a lot of things, but, 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 uh, you know, to end, my point is that I've, I've, I've spoken to a lot of political uh, scientists over time, and not one of them was interested in scaling. So you just introduced the notion of scaling, nonlinearity of scaling to the discussions, and you come up with all these results, you know, that, 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 that are obvious and answer a lot of questions that are obvious. Scaling is, is important. They didn't think about it. Communism failed in the in, in Soviet Union. Is it because communism is bad? Or is it a question of scale? Communism works in a kibbutz, no? You had a kibbutz fellow. It, it all sort of worked in a kibbutz, no? Yeah, or in the family, as we talked or about many times. Exactly, on here. exactly, exactly. It's, it, it works in a kibbutz, but not uh, the failed of the Soviet Union. So, so we ignore that that, 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 that essential thing that that people who work with nonlinearity and nonlinear responses under uh, uncertainty are familiar with. So we just translate some of our you know modest knowledge about nonlinear response to uh, questions of 
foreign affairs, uh, political science, and, 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 and international relations. My guest today has been Asim Nicholas Taleb. Asim, thanks for being part of Econ Talk. Thank you. I'm always honored to be here. This is Econ Talk, part of the Library of Economics and Liberty. For more Econ Talk, go to econtalk.org, where you can also comment on today's podcast and find links and readings related to today's conversation. The sound engineer for Econ Talk is Rich Goyette. I'm your host, Russ Roberts. Thanks for listening. Talk to you on Monday.